Hello. Looks like I'm live. Uh, hopefully this week goes a lot better. Uh, let's see. So last week, here are the results. I was trying to fill this in before the stream started, the past three years results, but I couldn't find my 2019 numbers because of stupid autosave that overwrote things. But I know I was 4.69, I can tell you that. But 2017, I barely was profitable. 2018 was a good year. But um, anyway, before I begin, I hurt my back at the gym yesterday uh i had a back injury when i was in college and uh it was a really bad back injury and i aggravated it again yesterday so uh that uh i could i couldn't even stand upright yesterday it was that bad but today's a lot better i went to the gym i go to and went to the hot tub and it feels a lot better so anyway uh last week you know was last week uh four and four against the spread it was the money line is disappointing because Ewell Monroe, their quarterback looked like he scored a touchdown on the last, like with 20 seconds to go to take the lead and win the game. And he celebrated. And instead of, you know, getting back to the line of scrimmage because he thought it was a touchdown, the ref said he was short and then time ran out. So if that didn't happen, I would have won a plus 900 and the week would have been completely different. But instead, it was my first losing week of the year. Uh, of course, it happens to be the first week where I bet more units. So, you know, Murphy's Law. But still profitable on the year, barely. Uh, let's see if we can turn around this week. Uh, some housekeeping things. Uh, that stat, that third-party stat I was talking about that I took out last week, well, they updated finally for the year, so I put it back in this week. So it's back to how the model is running the first couple weeks of the year. Uh, it's identical to how the model ran in 2018, where I was plus 22.73 units on the year. So that's how the model is right now. So I actually already ran the model just because, you know, I did that last week, and I feel like that's what did a lot of the uh, uh, errors last week is because I ran the model, like, during the stream, and I think that just might have, like, fried my resources. But I already ran the model, so we can get started right away. We got 28 games this week. We got our first neutral site game of the year as well. So let's get started with Tulane and Houston. I think this is going to be two, uh, Houston's first game of the year, and Tulane's been pretty disappointing and while my model thinks that uh, Houston's going to win, there's no value on either side here. Tulane meets two of the keys, but not all four. So, um, the keys are going to be the same as they have been uh, all year long. Like I said, the model has not been consistent week to week, you know, because I keep having to add stats, remove stats. So I can't do a key analysis because you can't do a key analysis until you're using the same stats and stuff that you used the week before. And since it's been so fluid, I can't do that. So keys are the same. Blender, ATM, Penny, greater than 1. ATM, cover, percentage, uh, edge, greater than 0. So these columns. Money lines, uh, ATM, value, greater than 1.04%. Uh, and dime, greater than 2.68%. Has to be a favor to minus 400 or worse. So that's that game. Uh, we got our first play. Uh, Louisville, uh, money line, minus 180 against Georgia Tech. It has Louisville winning about 71% of the time. So a 6.7% edge there. Do they meet the dime, though? Yes, they do. It's just I don't have the formatting for the dime. Uh, Georgia Tech, I think they're a terrible team. Uh, they beat Florida State, but Florida State's terrible, too. And then UCF blew them out. And then UCF goes and lose last week against Tulsa. So Georgia Tech, just not a good team. And I think Louisville should be able to handle them. Mississippi State and Kentucky. So Mississippi State had that big letdown, kind of expected uh, last week against Arkansas, although not expected to lose, but expect to have a letdown. I'm just surprised they lost. Uh, but it says they bounced back against Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky's 0-2, you know. So one thing I've wondered about the season is, you know, when teams start like 0-2, or for a team like Oklahoma, for example, they've already lost twice. I'm surprised there hasn't been a lot of players starting to opt out yet. You know, like, you know, we've already lost twice. You know, we have nothing to play for. Screw this, right? I'm surprised that hasn't happened yet. So you have to wonder how motivated a team like Kentucky is going to be starting 0-2. Mississippi State, on the other hand, you know, they're 1-1, and have a little bit more to play for. But this uh, is a pretty even matchup, you know. Right on even, even, even. So the one and a half points have a lot of value here. So Mississippi State against the spread at plus 1.5 is the play. Uh, Duke and Syracuse. Uh, too bad this isn't a basketball matchup. It's a football matchup, unfortunately. Uh, no value on either side. Um, projected about a two point win for Duke, and that's where the spread is. Pitt and Boston College. So a guy on my uh, Twitter was hating me because I picked Pitt to cover last week the spread because my model said to and they didn't. He was like, oh, that shows that your model sucks. I'm like, dude, one game, man. One game, you know. At least I have a documented uh, 
three-year track record of profit in college football. Where's yours, right? You know? So anyway, uh, my model says Pitt on the money line this week at minus 210. Uh, kind of iffy, you know, against Boston College, but it says they're going to win about 69% of the time, so that's barely uh, profitable here. NC State and Virginia, no play here either. It has Virginia by about eight, and the spread is nine, so just not any value here. Uh, the spread is pretty razor sharp here. East Carolina and South Florida, two very bad teams in the AAC. Uh, this is not a good, good matchup at all in terms of quality of teams, uh, but my model thinks South Florida money line at minus 190 is a good play here. Uh, has them winning about two-thirds of the time, so just barely uh, beating that ATM win percentage key for South Florida, but they are the play. Miami and Clemson. Uh, this is the game of the week. It's uh, ABC's game of the week, and it has Clemson winning by about 18, but here's the problem. They don't meet this key right here, the ATM cover percentage key. If it gets a 13.5, Clemson will be a play, so keep an eye on that, but as of right now, they are not. Virginia Tech and North Carolina. This is another good matchup in the AAC this week. One of my old coaches as a head coach at Virginia Tech. Uh, he was my offensive coordinator at TCU. He, was a, <laughs> he didn't really like me too much on the field, but off the field he was a cool guy. But uh, it has Virginia Tech, or North Carolina is a five-point favorite. It has them winning by about four. So no play on the spread, but it does like them on the money line at minus 200. It has them winning about three-fourths of the time. So there is your play, North Carolina money line. Tennessee and Georgia, you know, Tennessee's 2-0, but this is kind of their prove-it week after they got two of the easier teams out of the way. Um, has Georgia pretty big here, you know, by about 17. Uh, however, Georgia only meets these three keys and not this one right here. Um, so no play on Georgia, even though they look pretty good in the model. I wouldn't fault you if you played them. The reason it, I want them to meet all four keys is kind of like a fail-safe, you know. Uh, but if they meet three of the four and you feel good, go ahead. All right, our first neutral site game of the year has me playing both Texas on the spread and money line. So I watched Texas very close last week, you know, being a TCU guy and watching that whole game. Uh, they, they played pretty well, to be honest with you. Uh, they just shot themselves in their foot a lot, and I think Oklahoma's going to be very deflated. You know, they're a playoff team every year. They're already eliminated from playoff contention, so how much is Oklahoma going to care, right? I feel like the way Oklahoma's played this year is a direct reflection of their coach. Their coach was like all offseason, like, oh, we shouldn't play, we shouldn't play, we shouldn't play, and I think that rubs off. I really think that rubs off on these players, and you can, you, you can kind of tell they're just kind of sluggish and not motivated out there. Uh, Texas, on the other hand, they're going to be motivated here, and I think this is a battle of motivation, which Texas is going to win, and my model agrees. It has them winning outright on all three metrics, so spread money line Texas. Texas Tech and Iowa State. So Texas Tech, like I said, uh, I don't think they're a good team, and Iowa State, you know, they're kind of under the radar, but, you know, beat Oklahoma last week, beat TCU. So they've rebounded nicely from that opening season loss, which I don't fault them at all, you know. Um, that's the thing. A lot of these teams, I, I forgot, I think it was Urban Meyer who said it. He says a lot of these teams just aren't in a routine, you know, COVID and everything. It just took them out of a routine. And I, I agree with them. You know, the routine is very important. When I played, our coach was very big on routine and like doing things the same thing every week. You know, he, he's a very big on routine. And I think it's a bigger deal than most people think. And so that's why these early season games where Iowa State lost to Louisiana Lafayette and Texas Tech almost lost to Houston Baptist, you know, it's just being knocked out of routine matters but my uh, model likes iowa state at minus 12.5 here they meet all the keys on the spread pretty easily but they're too big of a favorite to play on the money line but it doesn't matter they didn't meet the dime key anyway uh alabama and ole miss so ole miss you know that big wit road win at kentucky last week in alabama we really don't know what to think of them you know they beat t texas a&m pretty badly uh but alabama is just going to be alabama right so the question is how the question with Alabama in these games is always is how much is Nick Saban going to care about beating the spread? A lot of times they're big favorites, especially in those non-conference body bag games. It's just a matter of how quickly Nick Saban takes his foot off the gas. I don't know if that's this kind of game. You know, it's going to be a road game at Ole Miss, but there's going to be no crowd or anything to really get the Ole Miss uh, home players fired up here. So I think it's just a matter of Alabama being Alabama. My model has Ole Miss meeting these three keys, but Bama this key, so no play on this game. All right, Arkansas and Auburn. So Arkansas finally on the win column in conference play for the first time in three years, and then Auburn just that deflating loss at Georgia. 
So what do you have to say about that? Well, Auburn meets three of the four keys, but not the penny, which Arkansas does. It has Auburn by about 18, so if you feel like the penny is not meaningful, go ahead and play Auburn, but I am not. LSU and Missouri. So this game got moved to Missouri. It's supposed to be at LSU, but it got moved because of Hurricane Delta. So that kind of changes things a little bit. So Missouri's starting quarterback was a TCU's old starter, Sean Robinson. Uh, he played really good against Iowa State uh, in 2018, and after that he just fell off a cliff, right? And he transferred to Missouri, and he's already been benched. So uh, Missouri is already having quarterback issues. And LSU, on the other hand, you know, that disappointing loss against Mississippi State. But they rebounded against Vanderbilt, but that's expected. I think Vanderbilt's a very bad team this year, and so everybody's going to look good against them. Although Texas A&M did not. Uh, but this has it at LSU by about 15, so really no value here. All right, Florida and Texas A&M. This is kind of a big game for A&M. You know, they already lost their first big game to Alabama. They cannot lose this one. You know, otherwise it's like, what are you paying Jimbo Fisher $10 million a year for if he can't win the big games? That was always the problem uh, with Kevin Sumlin after they uh, beat Alabama. They could never win the big games, especially at home. Like, Kyle Field has had no home field advantage uh, ever since they joined the SEC. They always lose these big home games. And my model says it's probably going to happen again. It has Florida by 10 uh, but they don't meet all the keys. So, again, if you like just the raw outputs of my model, you know, Blender by 14, ATM by 7, Combo by 10, Florida's a play, but they just don't meet all the keys to be a play. But I think the uh, home woes continue for A&M. All right, so I'm the TCU expert of the – Betting world, I watched them last week. I told you guys, first game, a lot of kinks to work out. That's why TCU always starts the year off with a body bag game. Couldn't do it this year, so all those flaws were exposed by Iowa State. I think they shored up a lot of those problems against Texas. They won, obviously. Big plays on defense are still the problem, but I think that's fixable. It's just the guys got to be smarter, and as long as they play their assignments, I don't think it's a schematic issue. Um, Kansas State has quarterback uh, health concerns. Their starter, Skylar Thompson, nobody knows if he's going to play or not. If not, I really like TCU here. To, uh, just That's not a good defense to go against if you're a freshman that Kansas State would have. Um, TCU's offenses look really good in both games, especially with Mac du Max Duggan in at QB. So my model has TCU on the money line here at minus 335. That's a little steep, but I, I feel good about it as a TCU fan. I, I'm not worried. Um, and that's not my homer talking. I would tell you if it was time to worry, if that was a bad play, it's not. South Carolina and Vanderbilt. So South Carolina's 0-2, Vanderbilt's 0-2. Who's going to drop to 0-3? Well, I think, like I said, Vanderbilt's not a good team. And I think South Carolina, they have a lot of problems, but not enough problems to lose to Vanderbilt. Although if Vanderbilt's going to win a game this year, it's probably going to be this one. <laughs> but my system has South Carolina by about 15, but they don't meet all the keys, so no play. All right, Texas State and Troy. Um, Texas State, you know, they've kind of been hot and cold this year, but they've kind of overachieved uh, based on what was expected of them, and Troy has played really well outside of that game against BYU. Uh, my system has Troy by about 8.5, uh, spread 7.5, just no value here. All right, UL Monroe, which I think is the worst team in the country this year, although they should have beat Georgia Southern last week. They screwed me. God, the quarterback just celebrated too early. And then Liberty... Uh, my system has it by Liberty by about 15. So if you uh, like, like I said, if you don't think the penny is an important metric, which I think it's kind of like more of like a fail safe metric more than an important metric. So if you like this metric, this metric, and this metric, play Yo Monroe plus 19.5. Otherwise, pass on it like I am. UTSA and BYU. I think this 35 point spread is a lot of respect for BYU. I don't think UTSA is that bad, but my system has BYU by about 38. Uh, so. I guess the spread of 35, my first reaction was 35. That's too many points for them to be giving away. But my model has, you know, them winning by 40 on the blender. So, I mean, maybe uh, the odds makers are right, you know. But uh, no play here. Uh, no keys are met by enough teams. Or not enough keys are met by either team. Florida Atlantic and Southern Miss, uh, no play here either. I don't really have much to say. Florida Atlantic looked sketchy last week in their first game, and Southern Miss has just been <laughs> – They've kind of been their own worst enemy this year. Uh, like I said, the penny, if it's an important metric to you, pass on it like I am. If not, Florida Atlantic meets all the other keys. Temple and Navy. I think this is Temple's first game of the year, and it's not Navy's first game of the year, but it's like they looked bad against Air Force last week. They looked bad against BYU. Temple, I think they're somewhere in between 
those two teams and t- Tulane, who Navy beat. Uh, but Temple's first game, nobody knows what to expect here. I would, my model says Temple on the money line, but laying 165 on a team that hasn't played yet and it's a team that's played three, ooh, I don't know about that one. But like I said, I always play what my model tells me to play. I'm not going to veto that one. Middle Tennessee and Florida International. At least we're not on Middle Tennessee this week like we have been. We're actually on Florida International at minus 180. Has them winning about 66% of the time, so just enough value there to play Florida International. UTEP and Louisiana Tech. So the second worst team in the country, UTEP playing Louisiana Tech. My model has Louisiana Tech by about 22, so, and they meet all four keys, so they are a play at minus 15.5. All right, Florida State and Notre Dame. This would be a better matchup 20 years ago, but it's not. Uh, Florida State's just been awful this year, and my model has Notre Dame winning by 34, 27, 31. So they easily meet all the keys here. Notre Dame minus 20.5 is the play. UNC Charlotte and North Texas. Uh, North Texas, they are right up the road uh, from where I lived uh, in Fort Worth. I know a lot about them. I had a lot of friends go up to uh, go to North Texas. I had friends play for North Texas, and so I kind of pay attention to them, and they've been terrible this year. They've been really bad. Uh, Charlotte's kind of like that program on the rise, and North Texas, they're on the they're on the decline, right? After they had a pretty good year two years ago or three years ago. Uh, North Texas meets three keys, but not all four, so no play here. Marshall and Western Kentucky, we got a double play on Marshall here. Uh, seven point favorites, but my model says they're going to win by about six, 14 to 16. So uh, I don't know where what the odds makers are missing here, but spread and money line play on Marshall. And that is it. So let's go take a look at the plays this week. So we got six spread plays and we got nine money line plays, and they're all favorites outside of Texas. So heavy favorite money lines this week. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling this in. I'm going to do a point four again this week. And let's see, I'm going to do a point, mm, 0.7, 0.8, 0.8, 0.4, 1.3, 0.65, 0.7, and 1.1. So 9.7 units risk this week, so I'm getting back up to the uh, about half of what I'd normally risk in a week. And those are the plays. Uh, a lot of favorites this week, so. But that's probably a good thing. I always, I've always done better on money lines historically. Uh, pretty much all my profit has come from money lines, except for 2018. But last year, all my profit came from money lines, and same with 2017. So, that's a good thing. All right. How many features do I have in my model? It depends on what you mean by features, but um, I would say. Like I said, there's six components to my model. Um, you know, uh, that's all I can really say. I don't want to give away what they are, but there's six stats, six components um, that are measured. Yeah, so um, really it's just a uh, – hopefully we rebound this week. Uh, yeah, thanks for letting my back feel better. It's been a lot better better today uh, especially going in that hot tub but i literally could not stand up right yesterday i was going to the grocery store because i had no groceries and i was like having to hunch over my cart like a hunchback in notre dame uh to do grocery shopping it was pretty bad uh but it's no nothing new for me it's just it's the first time since 2016 and i started like a bulking program and bulking diet a couple weeks ago and the thing with bulking programs and bulking diets for me in the past is that I always quit like after three or four weeks because I feel like I'm getting too fat. But this time I'm just not going to worry about that. Uh, you know, I'll just watch why I eat a little bit more and uh, hopefully uh, add uh, as little fat as possible while I'm trying to build muscle here. Uh, but I'm not going to bail out on this one. But the thing I was doing yesterday, which is where I got the back injury, it's German volume training. Uh, I was doing 10 sets of 10 uh, squats, superset with the 10 sets of five uh, deadlifts, so I do 10 squats and then five deadlifts and circulate, you know, and the thing with that is your legs get worn out, and so towards the end there, my deadlift was too much back uh, and not enough legs, and so uh, I let my ego get the best of me, and I didn't drop the weight on the deadlift, so after a while, it just started to spasm, um, so 
That's, that's what, I think it's muscular, not bone, thankfully. In 2010, that back injury I got, it was two herniated discs. So hopefully none of that. Just What is the one book to stay away from in Las Vegas? Well, I wouldn't say that there's... Here's the deal. The, the more uh, touristy the casino or hotel is going to be, the more square the odds are going to be. Like MGM is probably the best example, all the MGM books. Um, because, you know, they offer like the worst Jews, the worst, uh, most square odds. I would say like MGM is the Bovada of Las Vegas. I do all my betting in Las Vegas at Stations, Westgate, South Point and treasure island those are the big four and sometimes the coasts like gold coast uh sun coast but you know i have a car like if you don't have a car and you have to walk places or uber places just bet where you can it's probably not going to be a difference but if you're willing to line shop uh like i do when i go there um check the just check the websites that have las vegas odds go to places like south point westgate you're going to get the best odds off the strip Anyway, uh, that should do it for the stream. I'd start a little bit early today, uh, but, you know, uh, I might do a live stream during the col early college football games this Saturday, uh, you know, just because I'm going to go watch the TCU game somewhere else. So it will only be for an hour or two. But, yeah, I might do that this Saturday. And I'm thinking about doing a video about politics betting yeah, political betting. I don't like. I said I don't want this channel to be about politics, and I don't like to talk about politics because it's involved in everybody's life. But I've had people ask me about like how you'd bet elections and stuff, and I've done it. My I did it in 2016. I've done it before, and I work in an industry that's pretty like has insider information on stuff like polling and all that stuff. You know, I work in broadcast TV. I work in audience research and consumer insights and. Uh, market research folk i've done focus groups i've done political polls i've done it all i know how the game works i know how the media works so i'm thinking about doing a video about that subject um in case anybody wants to place bets on these upcoming elections in a few weeks um so i might do that tomorrow just just cut just letting you guys know it's i'm gonna try my best not to be like partisan or like give any political opinions just give the facts you are correct. The safest way to bet is to do straight bets. Uh, but here's the deal with parlays, um, teasers, all that, reverses. If you're only going to be in Las Vegas like once a year, like this used to be me. I used to only go to Las Vegas once a year, right? And so I was like, well, I'm going to only be in Las Vegas once a year, so I might as well just have fun, right? So I would set aside some of my bankroll. I'd take me to Las Vegas just for fun bets, what I call just for fun bets, you know. I would place teasers, parlays, and I talked about this in my Las Vegas series of videos last year when I said that's why I called it No Rules Las Vegas because I don't apply any of my rules when I'm, you know, that one week per year, and it's all it would always be the first week of college football for me where I just go crazy on all that stuff and just kind of get that out of your system, and you'd all, I would always lose. Like, I would never be profitable with these fun bets, you know. Never. Like, I think I did, like I said, it, nine straight years of doing that in Las Vegas, and I never was profitable on my fun bets. And so they lose, right? And so when they lose, you're like, okay, you, it kind of reminds you that they're not fun when you lose. They're fun when you place them, and they're fun when you're watching them, but when they lose, you're like, okay, that's not fun. And so you kind of get it out of your system. I would kind of call it like a cheat meal on a diet. You know, you eat all that food, and you feel like crap, and you're like, yeah, uh, yeah, that's not as great as I was expecting it to be. So that's kind of like, so if you're just going to be in Las Vegas just for fun, go play some fun bets. Don't restrict yourself with all these rules. But if your goal is long-term profitability, um, yeah, stay away from parlays and teasers, reverses, and all that. You got Trump plus 160. Uh, yeah, I'm not, like I said, I don't want to, you know, I'll, I'll talk about all that tomorrow. Um, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to say that's not a bad bet. rankings well it depends on what you mean by rankings um like rankings like top 25 ap poll if you can clarify with me i'll stay on the stream to answer craig rob <laughs> I, I can't remember the last time i put a chip on a roulette wheel it's been a long time uh 
gosh, probably like me and my friend, me and my college football teammates when we were at TCU, we used to drive up to Windstar in Oklahoma. It'd take like an hour to get there from Fort Worth, but we would drive up there like during the off season and you know play blackjack at the Indian Casino and roulette was one. And you know we I didn't really know much at the time about odds. You know I knew basic stra- strategy and blackjack, but where they get you at those Oklahoma casinos is they make you pay a commission before every hand, and that pretty much raises the house edge like ten percent right there. Just having to pay that commission, like you had to pay fifty cents a hand to play blackjack. Uh, and that adds up over the long run to about a 10% house edge to make blackjack not worth it all. But I didn't know that at the time, so... But anyway, win projections. All right, so uh, you say you're using rankings like top 20, like human polls or like uh, computer polls. Um, if it's human polls, you know, it's... Uh, I don't know. I, I would be kind of skeptical there because... Especially the coaches poll, those guys don't really know what they're talking about, and I have my issues with the AP poll. But if you're using like computer polls, like uh, S and P, FPI, um, those types, those are good metrics uh, to use in a model. I I'm just gonna say right now that third party metric I talk about, it is a computer poll that I borrow from somebody else, the one that just updated this week, because it. I did a regression on it and did some back testing and found that it's pretty good when used in conjunction with the other stats of my model. Um, it, it, it's, it, it raises the uh, R values. So that's why I use it. So no problem at all with borrowing uh, computer rankings, but I'd be really skeptical of human polls. If you're going to use a human poll, use the votes and not the ranking. I wish I could talk about NFL, but I just, I've never modeled it before. Um, I don't really watch it that much either. I'll have it on as background noise, but I can't remember the last time I actually sat down to watch an NFL game. Uh, I'm just a college guy. Like, especially when I was at TCU, you know, we'd have our games on Saturday, and then, like, on Sunday we'd have workouts and practice, so you didn't really have time to watch NFL on Sundays when I was in college. And that's kind of how it's always been. I've always kind of had, like, Sunday as a recovery day from Saturday. Um, I'll keep up with my teammates in the NFL, which is becoming less and less by the year, you know. Uh, Andy Dalton, Marcus Cannon, I think those are two of the only one of my teammates that are still in the NFL that I played with. If you may ask, you mentioned you wager a lot on money line. Do you even bet money lines on big spread games like, for example, Alabama minus 35? No. Um, let me show you this. Uh, on my keys... I actually have the money line has to be greater than minus 401, so I won't play the big favorites. I do that because it's, I just I limit myself to 20% of my bankroll max units risk per week. So like this, I won't let it be greater than 20. And if you're playing a huge favorite, you're having to tie up a big chunk of your bankroll into that huge favorite. And that's the main reason. That's the main reason. But if you watch my college basketball video videos this past year, uh, you would have seen me play those big favorites, but I put them in parlays. That's the only time I'll ever endorse a parlay is if your model says a big money line favorite is a good play, um, but you want to keep your unit's risk for the day down, uh, tie it up with other big uh, money line favorites that your model is on. That's the only time I'll ever endorse a parlay is to just to get action uh, that your model says is profitable for those big favorites. I don't have a max on a spread, um, though. I'll play any spread. My model doesn't do half bets um, because it's a regression model, and so I'd have to compile a bunch of halftime scores from the past to do that, and I'm just too lazy. May, that's like That would be an off-season project, but I just don't – that's the thing. Like in the off-season, I'm working on other sports, college basketball, baseball, so it would, it would take a lot of work to get all those halftime scores uh, into my database. Um, yeah, I have, a bit, I have a database of like thousands – my score database goes all the way back to 2008 that I use for my football model, college football model. Um, so that's thousands of games, right? So I'd have to get thousands of games worth of halftime scores to do halves. How about my over first half? Like, I don't do totals either because, yes, my model spits out scores, right? So the total in this Marshall-Western Kentucky game is, uh, according to the combo, 40-41. Um, so I could technically track totals, but I don't because I feel like totals, uh, ex- 
especially in college sports, you have to make a model specific to totals. Specific to totals, and I've just never done it. For my baseball model, that's different. It's a Monte Carlo model, so you can do everything with it. But for a regression-based model, I would have to find different uh, coefficients and statistics to plug in for totals. And I trust this approach for spread and money line, but totals is a different story. Is Tulsa a sleeper year? Yes. I talked about them uh, in their first game against um, Oklahoma State. If you watch the live stream then, I said that they were a lot better than their 4-8 and eight record the year before. Their defense had caught up, and their offense was actually the reason they were 4-8, and eight, not their defense. So their defense played a lot better, uh, and we saw that last week against UCF when they beat them on the road in Orlando. And they beat UCF last year, too. And they played Oklahoma State pretty close. I know Oklahoma State had a quarterback go down with an injury in that game, so it was a little bit different. But even then, they were able to stop the run game of Oklahoma State. Uh, I think Tulsa is a sleeper. They get SMU at home, and they should have beat SMU last year. They lost in three overtimes after missing a bunch of chip shot field goals, and they blew a 21-point lead in the fourth quarter and all that. I, I think Tulsa is a very good sleeper in the AAC West. I don't know where they play Memphis. Uh, I don't know if they get them at home or on the road. But, yes, keep an eye on Tulsa. A close-up of all the info. Uh, here's the plays this week, but I always post a screenshot of this in my Twitter account uh, every time I'm done with the stream. So, But here is this, if you want to pause the video right here. Saturdays for college football. Do you bet a lot of games or a little? What's your range? Uh, obviously, there are games up to the 10 p.m. for the West Coast game. Well, if you watch my videos last year, I always say bet what my model tells me to bet. If that means one game a week or 50, I will bet them. Um, so there's no limit. I'll bet games in the morning, afternoon, night. I'll bet the Hawaii game. I'll bet the late Pac-12 games, you know. living Especially when I live in Kentucky, you know, and I would stay up till 2.30 in the morning watching those late Pac-12 games. Uh a little bit easier living in San Diego, not having to stay up so late. But you'd still be up at past midnight even then, like for some of those games. Like that UCLA-Washington State game last year that was like 67 to 66. That ended after midnight Pacific time. And I had a bet on that game. I'm pretty sure I had UCLA on the money line in that game. And they, they came back big and won. Yeah, being on the East Coast is tough. Uh, I definitely like the Pacific time zone when it comes to... Uh, sports watching sports on tv uh how do you select what units to play um honestly i would play as many units as it takes to get this number to 20 but i'm not doing that yet i don't trust the season yet enough to do that uh so right now i'm playing about half of what i'd normally play so in a normal week this would, these would probably be 0.8 units and this would probably uh be average as uh two win point eight on the money lines Yeah, this is my second year to do college football on this channel. Um, I did college, college basketball, too, last year. Uh, not like this, so I wouldn't give out my picks for college basketball on videos. I would just recap them because every day in college basketball, I'm not going to do a video every day. But I'd post them on my Twitter account every day, and then every week I'd recap my college basketball picks. Um, but you can probably learn a lot of concepts from college basketball as well because uh, my models in the two sports, college football and college basketball, are pretty much identical in terms of how they operate. It's just they use obviously different inputs, but the, op the way they operate and everything is very identical, which is why the basketball model as well use the penny, dime, quarter, nickel, all that. All right. Well, um, it's 7.06. Uh, Central Time, 5.06 Pacific Time, so I'm going to uh, call it a day. Who do I have winning the national championship in college football? Uh, I mean, it's if they let Ohio State in the playoff, that's the thing. Like, Are they going to let these teams that only play six games, eight games into the playoff? But I think it's going to be Ohio State. Uh, if not, them, Alabama. What, it's going to be one of those two. Make a Discord... <laughs> I'm an old school guy. I like IRC. I mean, I used to use IRC uh, way back in the day. I don't, I mean, you guys might be too young, uh, but I've tried Discord, and it's like I'm so used to IRC that it's like it's just different. I guess it's like I I guess Discord is like IRC for like millennials and Zoomers or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but man, yeah, I, I I'm more of like a simple man. IRC is just is my 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 scene. 
All right, guys, and uh, it looks like it's all the questions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. I appreciate it. Uh, I, like I said, I had that video about political betting coming out. Uh, my college basketball team is also TCU. Uh, that's where I went, played, grew up watching TCU basketball and football. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks again for tuning in.